Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's do some super cute paper crafting. Stay tuned. So by now, most of you have heard me rave about the wonderful crafting on Instagram using the hashtag Posh Paper Lady Inspired. And if you haven't gone out, by all means, guys, get out there and check out what's going on. There are some amazing crafts being posted by you guys. And if you have not uploaded your crafts and tagged them, hashtag Posh Paper Lady Inspired, go ahead and do it. Don't be shy. We would love to see all of the wonderful work that everyone is doing. So head on over to Instagram using the hashtag Posh Paper Lady Inspired and let us see the beautiful work that you two are doing. So guys, in a previous video, we made these wonderful, wonderful projects using black and white contact paper from the Dollar Tree as well as black poster board from the Dollar Tree and these just turned out beautifully. So easy to make, so economical, and so stinking cute. So today we are going to make an awesome way to present one of these. Let's say you want to give one away. Well, this is a stinking cute way to do it. It is a purse made using the contact paper, the poster board, and then some of the other things that I have and I monogrammed it. So if you wanted to make this as a gift for someone else, you could certainly just tailor it to fit their monogram. Then wrap one of these in some beautiful tissue paper, put it in and you've got a gift ready to go. So let's make it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our handles because as I always do, anytime that I am making a project that has handles, I go ahead and make those first so that the handles can get that beautiful curved shape that I like for my handles to have. And so what I have here is a piece of one and a half by 14 poster board. And all I'm doing is I am just going to fold it into shape and try to make it the same size as that one. So I am folding it into thirds so that I can get the appropriate shape that I need. And the way that I do it, guys, is I fold my handle into thirds and then I glue it closed. And I am simply going to take my big old spatula and just round it. So I have got three layers here. So I took my handle, folded it in one third, folded over the other third, and this is how I like to make my handles. So we do this first so that they can harden and then when I get ready to use them, they'll bend the way that I want them to. So now I can set them to the side and we are going to start making our purse. So I have already cut down a piece of my beautiful, beautiful contact paper. And I have a piece of my 11 by 14 black poster board that I got from the Dollar Tree. Both of these are from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to remove my backer from this contact paper. and I'll place this down and then I'll use my poster board, lay it down right there, take my hands and just initially get it stuck. And now I'll just come in with my finger blade and remove my excess contact paper. And this contact paper it's very sticky, but guys, it is so pretty. 
the black and white, I think a lot of you said it yesterday, black and white is just so elegant in crafting and it just makes such an awesome statement. So I'm going around all four edges and we're going to get this removed and then we'll start working on our project. So because there are so many pieces to this, I'm going to tell you in stages of what we're using. So, so far we have used two pieces of 14 by one and a half inch strips and we folded those into thirds. And then we used our 11 by 14 poster board and mounted that to the um, contact paper that we then trimmed out the excess. So now I am going to go over my contact paper just to make sure that I have a nice stick. And I know that yesterday, a couple of you had concerns about air bubbles. I have not experienced that at all. So that's not to say that you won't, but I haven't. And using this, I have not experienced it. So I am going to bring in my scoreboard. And on the 14 inch side, I am going to score this at six. And then I'm going to score it at eight. Then I'll rotate it to the 11 inch side and we're going to score at two. Now I don't have enough room, so then I'll just flip it to the black side, score at two until I meet the score that I had already started. I'll rotate it to the opposite 11 inch side, score at two all the way down, and then I'll flip it, go to that two, and meet that original two score. So now we need to fold and burnish all of our scores, and because we are going through contact paper as well as poster board, you want to make sure that you are giving a nice, crisp burnishing. And one of you also said it best yesterday that using this black paper gives you an immediate beautiful lining to anything that you're working with. And it does, because when you're using white paper, sometimes you feel like you need to add something else to cover up the whiteness of that paper. But this is just so elegant. And guys, this is a true black. So when you're looking for some true black paper, this is black through and through, and it is such a beautiful shade of black. So now we need to release our tabs, and our tab is this piece and this piece. And anytime that we're releasing the tab, the first thing that we need to do is we want to separate the tabs from the flap. So we need to go up to the score mark and drag straight down. Now let's go up to this score mark and drag straight down. Then we can angle in on both sides. And then we reduce this. So we're simply removing some of it to shorten the length of that tab. We'll flip it over, do the same thing on the opposite end. So we're going to release our tab. Now we can angle in. and I'll turn it and we will reduce it. Now ordinarily it would be time for us to put our purse together, but this time we're not doing that because we need to go ahead and place these strips here. And the way that we're going to do that, I have pieces of paper that measure one half by 14. I don't need all of that, but I will cut some off in just a minute. But what I want to do is I am going to take this and where you place it is totally up to you, but I'll turn it this way so that you can really get a true picture of what I'm about to do. So I'm just placing some glue. Now I'll take this and I like to angle mine out just a little bit. So I will take it and I'm bringing it down 
to the score mark here. So I have that there and I'll get that stuck. And then I'm going to trim off about that much and I'll take this piece and just fold it over because it's really not going to be in the way. It won't stand out because it's the same color. So we have that one down and we'll do the same thing over here. So I'll get that matched as best I can. And I'll take my glue and I'll place my glue on this piece. And we'll take this one and we'll put it down right there. And I'm just gonna look at that to see if I like the placement. And I do. So now I'm going to trim away some of this and I'll take this piece, fold it over, use my big old spatula to get this stuck, just like that. And we'll repeat the same thing on this side. So first I'm going to walk you guys through how I'll put down the metal pieces in the topper and then I'll do the other side off camera. So for my topper piece, I'm going to go ahead and put that down first. And I have a piece that measures 12 by two. I'm going to fold it in half, not even put it in my scoreboard. So I'll get this folded. And then I'll take my glue and I'm going to put glue all over this. You can use tape on this piece if you like. I am just going to use glue because it's what I have out. Then I'll take this and I'm just going to put it across the top here and I'll lay it down and I'll use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. And you can go with whatever color you want on this project. I just thought that pink really helped that to pop. So now I'm going to trim off the excess. And now I want to go ahead and I am going to add my little metal pieces, but before I do, I am going to take a pin and just make a mark of where I want to put my holes. So I put one there, then I'm just going to make a mark here. You can't see these, but I am simply just making marks, spacing them so that I can come back and I'll use that as my guide to punch my holes. You can make yourself a little template before you do this. I am just eyeballing because that's just what I do. So now that I have my little guide here, I'll use my big bite and I am going to punch a hole using my 1 8 setting. And I will keep going down and punching a hole everywhere that I have made a mark. And I have only made four marks. So I'm finding my marks and pressing my hole. My holes may not be exact, but they will be good enough. And let's get that one. And you can see that I have four holes spaced right there. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And like I said, I'll do this whole piece with you guys. And then I'll do the other side off camera. And now we have our holes. So what I am going to do is I am using my little snaps and I showed you guys this box of snaps and you've got three different 
sizes and multiple colors in here and I'm going to go with the gold. So I am punching my snaps through and then I'll take the little backer, put it down just like that and I'll do this all over this project. So everywhere I have a hole, I'll be placing a snap and I went with gold on this project because I'm going to be using gold letters, which I think will really stand out. It's really hard to work with the Band-Aid guys, but we will make it work. Did you hear that snap? And then I'll just keep putting these in and snapping them shut. All right guys, so now that I have all of my metal pieces in, don't you think they look cute? They're not all as straight as they probably would be if I made myself a template, but I am okay with how they look. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very quick way that I pound these into place and keep them from moving because they are um, a little bit loose because I don't have any chipboard. So basically what I do is I take my hammer and I will be making some noise and I'm just going to pound down a little bit, not a lot. This is not the way that these are intended to be used. This is the way that works for my project. So just give a little pound and you will have these nice and secure and in place. Now I could have placed my handles before I place those, but I don't want to because on the inside here, you can kind of see some of the indentations where I pound it. So I'm going to actually place my handle so that it covers that. So now that we have this and we've got it flat, we are going to go ahead and place down our monogram. So I am putting this one down for my sister, Teresa. And I won't say her last name because she might not want me to do that. But I am just going to peel off my sticker backing, place that down. Then I'll place down my W. And then I'll place down my T. And doing this just gives you, and I'm gonna pick it up so I can make sure I've got it right. But doing these little things, it just really helps to personalize your project and makes it a whole lot more special for the person that you're giving it to. I am going to place some glue on the back of this O because it really doesn't want to stick. So I'm gonna place that down just like that. So I'm gonna pick this up and look at it just to make sure that I have everything nice and straight and even. And when I think that I do, I'll just use my big old spatula to make sure that everything is stuck. And you can see just how pretty that really is. So I am going to do the other side off camera and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I have my handles on and our bag is ready to be put together. And don't you think that that is absolutely fabulous. So what I'm going to do is I need to just bend this back a little bit and I'll place my glue on this flap and then I'll bring that side flap up just like that so it's the flap from the back. And then I can take my glue and then I can place glue all over this piece and we'll take this piece Fold it over. And get this stuck. To work that glue in. 
and we'll do the same thing on this side. So we're going to place some glue right there on that flap. Let's see if I can open that just a little bit. So I'm gonna place my glue. Hopefully y'all can see me placing the glue there. And then I'll fold up that side piece there. I'll place my glue on this piece and make sure you get plenty of glue the way that I have there. And then I'm just going to bring it over and we'll get that stuck. And we want to make sure that we're matching up our tops. So now I can take my spatula, really work that glue in. And now we have another gorgeous monogrammed bag. And on this one, I decided to go with just the black handles because I like these handles on this one, but I thought, okay, I'm just gonna go with black on this one and just keep that pink, black, and white going. And I love how both of these look. And like I said, they are perfect for the projects that we made yesterday. And in this one, we can take our beautiful card place it down inside and we have a wonderful gift. And in this one, we can place our little tags or we can place the cards, completely up to you. But these are just so stinking cute and so easy to make. And I can tell you that whoever you make these for, they will absolutely love them because you took the time to really personalize it. And it looks like a little bag, a monogram bag that you might order or you might go in the store and buy. So guys, I hope that y'all have liked this fun, quick and easy little way to give those awesome gifts that we made. And I hope that you have liked this video. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.